Well, hello, my dears. So I wanted to start this video, give a little context as to what I'm doing. I feel like I'm in a jungle because the plant right here is showing up and the plant out there is showing up, but that is where I'm thriving. So I am starting a couple fun video project ideas for myself, for my mental health and things that will bring me joy. So what I have been missing just terribly so, so much lately is the feeling that I got when I read young adult books, young adult fantasy specifically. And I don't think that my mental health could be lower than it is now. And so that's why I feel like I'm very much prepared to be in a space of escapism, lighthearted reading, reading for joy and wonder, and maybe a little bit of romance and all of those feelings that young adult fantasy books gave me and or give us still, if you're a reader of young adult fantasy, all my shelves on this side of the room are all young adult fantasy books that I thoroughly just absolutely adore. I haven't read young adult fantasy in so long because it wasn't what I needed at the time. I wanted very philosophical books. If I was reading SFF, I wanted literary fiction, thematically heavy, dark books. I've been out of the young adult fantasy scene for a hot freaking second. And that's okay. There's a time and a season for everything. I truly believe that. I truly believe in going with the flow and reading what makes you happy at the time being. So what I want to do to cheer myself up and maybe bring you along for the ride, cheer you guys up as well, is read some young adult fantasy books in this vlog. I'm thinking three to five, right? It's going to take me a long time. I do not have nearly as much reading time as I used to. If this is the first video you're seeing, I work a full-time job as a dental hygienist. I'm very close with my family and boyfriend and very busy, so I don't have a lot of reading time. But young adult reads very, very quickly for me. If I peruse my shelves, I have no young adult books on my physical TBR. So I've got to go to the bookstore to get some young adult fantasy books. Now I wanted your participation in this. So at the time that you're seeing this, it will be too late to participate, but just go follow my bookstagram for future vlogs like this because I do plan to do more theme-based reading vlogs that are less of a time crunch rather than a weekly reading vlog, getting content out quickly and instead do content of value of something that I enjoy. So anyways, bookstagram, books with Brittany underscore, it'll be below, go follow it because I'm gonna go to the bookstore right now and that's just going to give me the endorphins I need to make it through this day. And then I'm going to put some polls on my bookstagram and ask you guys which books I should purchase. We will wait to see which ones win the polls. And then I will purchase those books and slowly read them throughout this vlog. I do not know this could span a month. This could span a week. Just depends on where my mind's at, what I feel like reading, because we don't force ourselves to read books when we don't feel like it around this household. But we're going to go to the good old handy dandy Barnes and Noble because that is my options around here. So let's go. I'll take you along. Let's get in the Jeep. Let's go for a ride. Let's pick out some books together with Bookstagram's help and get happy. Okay. Okay. Let's go. Well, technically, since this is a reading vlog, I can include regular vlog things. So here are three precious little kittens to hopefully brighten your day. Al Fox loves to hide. So um, she is back there. You can't see her too well, but this is my favorite room in my house. These are my young adult shelves. Let's zoom out. Over here, well, that's not even all young adult, but young adult is the entire top of my library. And I have to do some reorganization soon since I took the TBR books off the shelf. So that will be coming to you soon. Okay, we've made it to Barnes and Noble. And if I want to film myself walking in or my feet at all, I've lost two toenails. So please excuse my feet. I can't even. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Um, why a fantasy? Why a fantasy? What are we going to get? I hope there's something good. Maybe I'll get like a young adult contemporary. No, we're going to stick to fantasy, I think. Let, let's go see.
look who I found at the bookstore. We got some books. Not for this video. We're going to put up the polls later, but he got me some books. Okay, guys. So the poll results were kind of shocking in a couple of the categories, I think. So let's go over the results. I will put the results from the Instagram poll right over here. So the first winner is A Magic Steeped in Poison. And I am excited because I freaking love this cover. And when I was at the bookstore the other day, I saw the sequel for it and I, I picked it up and I was like, I need this. And then I realized it was a sequel. I think it's just a duology. So hopefully I'll like it enough to pick up the second one. But I know this involves like tea and magic and it's Japanese inspired, I believe. And it has this phenomenal cover. So I'm really, really excited. That one won by a landslide, which I was kind of, not gonna lie, I was hoping for the Deeper Waters one, but that's okay. I can always read that for a later video or something. Then we have Daughter of the Moon Goddess, which this is hard because a lot of people consider this adult and a lot of people consider it young adult. I've heard from pretty much every single friend I have that has read this book that it reads very young adult. So whether it is technically adult or young adult, I don't know, I'm not the creator of the book that's up for you guys to decide but i am including it in this young adult fantasy reading vlog because all of my friends have said it reads very much like young adult and so this is the time for me to pick it up if i'm going to i'm not gonna lie i sort of wanted to read the girl who fell beneath the sea more just because i think it was murphy who told me that i would really actually enjoy that book so fingers crossed i really do enjoy the daughter of the moon goddess once again it's an absolutely phenomenal cover so regardless i'll be excited to own this book the third poll we have fireborn that won and i'm not gonna lie i really wanted to read beasts of prey but my sister and a couple other friends really wanted me to read fireborn so i'm not bummed that that one won the poll and hopefully it'll be good enough to actually continue on with it that's a hard thing about ones that are in series but i do believe it's only a trilogy and then last but not least we have six crimson cranes now I think I'm on the outside with this one. I much prefer the US edition compared to the UK edition. I really enjoy the color palette of the UK edition, but the US actual illustration is much more beautiful in my opinion. And have you seen book two with the dragon on it? Have you seen it? Okay, I need it. So that means I'm very excited to be reading Six Crimson Cranes. And I do think that all of these books sound interesting. They all sound like something I have the potential to enjoy. So I'm gonna be ordering A Magic Steeped in Poison, Daughter of the Moon Goddess, Fireborn, and Six Crimson Cranes. So we need to get online and order us some books. And I'll report back once I've received these books in the mail, and then we can get going. Okay, it's like 6 a.m. I couldn't sleep anymore. Alfax, why don't you come back? Yeah. I was going to say the ladies and I are going to pick out which book I'm going to read next. What do you think, Carly Kins? How cute is she? Okay, so let's decide. Alfax, why don't you come back? Can you hear her little cooing? Please tell me it's not the cutest thing ever. And she just came to lay right on my foot. Kitty loves. <laughs> Alfax. Okay, so these are the books we're going to choose from. Sorry, Carly. I can't lay on my foot while I'm trying to do this. We have Daughter of the Moon Goddess. We have Fireborn. We have six crimson grains and a magic steeped in poison. And I'll get right back to you. Okay, you guys. So I'll be completely honest. I have barely started one of these books. But before I get further into it, I wanted to do a little predictions clip to see if I'm correct in thinking about which order I'll enjoy these books. I don't know why I phrased it that way. I'm going to predict which book I'll like most to least and then we'll compare at the end to see if I get it right. So once again, here are the four books. So my guess, I don't know, because that's a different ranking than which one I'm most excited to read. Okay, I'm going to guess that I'm going to like Daughter of the Moon Goddess best. So this is my number one pick. 
dealing with Chinese mythology. It's beautiful. If I'm prepared going into it knowing there's a love triangle, then maybe I'll like it. So that is my number one pick. My number two pick is going to be a magic steeped in poison because once again, we have Chinese mythology. Is this Chinese or Japanese? Yeah, it's Chinese. Anyways, once again, the Chinese mythology and tea magic. So that is number two. Three is Six Crimson Crames by Elizabeth Lim. I don't know what makes me pick this for three, um, but I just really hadn't heard too much about the plotter synopsis before. Is this Asian inspired again? It is, but is it Japanese? But I have really high hopes for this one. And then actually the book that I think I'm gonna enjoy the least is Fireborn by Rosaria Munda. So this is the one that I'm actually like least excited about, least looking forward to picking up. But this is the one I did choose to pick up first, basically for that reason, because I didn't want to save the one I'm least excited about for last. Sorry, Jessica, if this is making you sad. I know that you guys are all most excited for me to read this. So hopefully I enjoy them all. But yeah, how can I stack this? So order from, here's my prediction. I'll enjoy this the most to the least. And we'll compare this at the end. So one, two, three, four. Fingers crossed, here's to hoping I like them all. Okay, so the one I decided to go with first is Fireborn by Rosaria Munda. And this is Dragon Fantasy, I think. And the reason I chose this first is because it's honestly the one that I'm least excited about. I'm sorry, Jessica, <laughs> I just really am. I don't think that I'm gonna love this one as much as everyone else, but everyone loves this. And this is the one that got the most comments on my book haul video about people saying I should read it. They're trying to become the top position in the dragon riding fleet. So let's read about some dragon riders and start this book and see what all the hype is about and go from there. So I've done some reading this morning, as you guys saw, we did reading sprints and I've made it to page 68. So my guess is that's close to like 15% of the way through. So I'm not super far in, but I just, just wanted to check in and say that I'm enjoying it. And I wanted to talk a little bit about the plot so far. So it's really interesting. And I feel like the world building is fairly like complex and well-developed from what I can tell. So we have Annie and Lee. Lee is a male student and Annie is the female and they were in this orphanage together. And nobody knows Lee's identity. He's actually Leo, son of Leon, who was one of these like founding fathers, like dragon riders, dragon born, um, these three families before there was like this, I don't remember what they called it. I wanna say like revolution. I'm a little bit confused on what actually happened because it sounds like they're saying that the person who like took over the protectorate like saved them from something, but I don't exactly know what they were saved from, like what the threat was. And they almost did away with the dragon riders and the dragons, but they decided to keep them. So now they've changed the way that people can bond with dragons. And rather than it just being, you must have the blood of this dragonborn family it is like this testing system that allows anyone from any class or any background to become a dragon rider and become the like next inheritor or whatever you'll call it but so I think that's really interesting I like the political setup and then I like the flashbacks we get between Lee and Annie because they were in this orphanage together and so it's like italicized when he's thinking back upon their time together there. So yeah, he is this like royal born important person in hiding because they think that some of the dragon born had escaped. So there's also like this outside threat of possibly other people having dragons elsewhere because they think maybe someone took dragons with them. So they've all been tested. They've all been doing testing to become part of the fourth order. And then they're gonna like narrow down the candidates they have to compete against one another to become the inheritor or I can't remember exactly what they call it, but basically they want to be like top and I forget what they call it. So yeah, I think we're going to get more into the politics of like what the threats are from the outside of where they are because 
where they are. I wish I had a map, to be honest. It's very safe because it's almost unapproachable and you can't really get to it unless you had dragons. Um, but yeah, I like the character interactions. We've got a couple dynamics between possible like romantic setups and I think it'll be interesting to see. I don't love Annie's character too much yet, but I do really enjoy Lee and some of the side characters. I'll update you guys later once I've read more. Okay, we're just doing some Patreon reading sprints tonight. And I finally, well, we have two minutes left. And I finished Fireborn, which I'm glad because I've been reading this. This is the fifth day. So that's kind of taken me a long time because it's only 430 pages. So I'm really excited to move on to the second book. I will save all of my thoughts or most of my thoughts for tomorrow so I can think about it a bit. But first thing I will say, it was good. It was good. But I don't think you ever want to finish a book and say, it was good. I'm really looking for like, great. You think so? I'm just trying to read. <laughs> She's vlogging during reading sprints. There's one minute left and I just finished my book. It's exciting times over here. I'll tell you guys tomorrow when Paul's not around. Okay. Sad. <laughs> All right, guys, finally, finally, we can update about Fireborn by Rosaria Munda. What can I say about this in a spoiler free way? First of all, it was worth a read. Don't get me wrong. It was entertaining. It was fun to read. It was easy to read. And it wasn't like something I hated reading. But you never want that feeling. So if I were rating things, which you know I don't, it would be maybe a three-star book for me. It had all the components. So if we're going down a checklist, did it have good world building? Absolutely. Did it have established politics and political systems and um, like political scheming? Absolutely. Did it have friendships? Sure. Did it have romantic relationships? Yep. Did it have dragon riding? Yeah. Did it have this like battle between old friends mm -hmm. it had everything that should be interesting and just the execution didn't work for me it was good like it was good and i'm not trying to take away from that but it wasn't wowing and it wasn't great and that's just all personal taste and preference when i was looking up some reviews for this after finishing it i found myself really relating to the majority of the people whose main complaint was just that they were bored there was nothing in this that i felt like it was coming to life i never felt this sense of urgency uh, when we're talking about the characters, so we obviously have Lee, who it tells you on the back, so I'm not spoiling it. He was born to the aristocrat family that used to rule the city, but people don't know that. Annie is born lowborn, and her family was killed by dragons, and they both become dragon riders. First of all, one of my major complaints is there was like no interaction shown between the humans and the dragons in this. Like, what? Why are we not getting scenes of like the human dragon interaction type of relationship? I mean, I guess that's just not her point. She definitely really wanted to dive into the politics of this. And when I finished it, I was at a hard no, won't continue, won't be reading book two. As of right now, it's really up in the air. If I ever feel the itch for it, I'll pick it up because do I want wonder sort of where things are going to turn out because honestly to me the politics in this were interesting that was its strong point of this I enjoyed this novel mainly because of trying to figure out okay the political system now the rulers now they overtook the last rulers for these reasons and they're now going to implement a system of this and is everything as it seems and how are the dragon fleet the dragon riders going to change this there's also like older family members that are perhaps reappearing. There's threats from the outside of invasion. So like all of those political happenings were what was very interesting to me. I loved Lee's character and I found reading from his perspective evoked a lot of emotion from me, but I hated Annie. And it's pretty much split dual perspective, tells you like back and forth. And Annie, I just literally couldn't stand. I could not stand. She is one of the main type of female protagonist that I hate so much and I can't put my finger on why other than she's annoying AF. 
I please stop. Like I don't I get it. Like the dragons ruined your family, but like killed everybody in your village, but like you don't have to be I don't know. We've all been through trials and tribulations. Some of us handle it differently, I suppose, but I really hated her. And so then we see her having these like small romantic bits with another character and they're not reciprocated by her. And then we also see Lee having these romantic relationships with another female character and she does like it, but also Lee and Annie have this tension and will they, won't they? So it has all the elements of an excellent book but it just fell flat for me in the execution and I found it rather boring as a whole instead of fun and exciting like a fire breathing dragon fantasy should have been in my opinion. I'm sorry I said it, but I'm glad I read it. I really truly am totally worth the read in my opinion. Does that make any sense? I don't know, but that's how I feel. On to the next one. So the next book I decided to pick up is The Beautiful Six Crimson Cranes by Elizabeth Lim. I know nothing about this going into it. Whatever I read before to you is all I know. Uh, I know it involves dragons because I've seen the cover for book two, which is phenomenal. Um, it's Asian inspired and that's all I know. And so let's dive in and see what this is all about. Okay, you guys, so now at this point, I have read about 60 pages of Six Crimson Cranes, and I am immediately drawn in, immediately enjoying this so much more than Fireborn, um, which is a good thing since this was my number three prediction. I'm kind of reading them in the order of what I thought I would like least to most. So we're following a princess who at the beginning is expected to be married off, sent away. She's 16 years old, so she's very young, and she knows she'll have to leave the place that she's at that she likes um, and just sort of become this wife who's locked away and has to partake in these silly hobbies that she doesn't want any part of. So turns out magic is not acceptable where she's at. It is looked down upon or she might even be in danger because of it and she has the ability to enchant objects so she enchants this paper crane named kiki that she loves and it goes into the water so she goes after it one day and sees a dragon this causes her to miss her betrothal so the king is furious right because she's messed everything up at this point so her punishment is that by the way her dad does not know about the magic her punishment is to embroider this tapestry i think as like a formal apology to her betrothed it's going to take her like six weeks now she has six brothers and so i think this is like daughter of the forest do you know that story where the woman is forced to like weave all of these sweaters for her many brothers type of thing like i don't know if it's a similar take on that retail retelling and i can't even remember what that retelling is called but i love it it's very like fairy tale-esque vibes. What can I say? I don't want to. So I can't say too much more than that at 60 pages in right now and glancing over the synopsis. I haven't even gotten all the way through the synopsis and I sort of just spoiled myself for something that definitely relates this to Daughter of the Forest. But I love that book so much and this is giving me those types of vibes with a twist. So, so far I really like the spirit and spunk of our main character, Shiori. I like um, what we found out about the dragon that she encountered when she fell in the lake. I like the idea of this magic and her training. And so I think that it's going to be a super fun time and something that I'm really gonna love reading. So I have to go now, but I'll report to back in a little bit once more of the events from the synopsis have taken place so I can tell you guys how I'm feeling about it. But I have just great vibes, great, great vibes for this so far. Okay guys, really quick, let's talk about the most recent book that I finished for this reading vlog and that is Six Crimson Cranes by Elizabeth Lim. And oh my God, I loved this. I loved every single second from start to finish. It was phenomenal. So I think the last time I updated you guys, I didn't get through all of this synopsis. So we have the main character, Shiori, 
and she has this like troubled relationship with her stepmother. I already discussed all about her betrothal. Basically, what ends up happening is Shiori witnesses Rikama doing something questionable. And so supposedly Rikama, the stepmother, banishes her, turns all six of her brothers into cranes with crimson crowns, puts this like magical bowl over her head to hide magic. So no one can recognize her. She can't use her magic and magic doesn't affect her. So she is not within her home anymore. She's trying to find her way alone and she can't speak at all or her brothers will die. One brother will die for each word that she speaks. So this is absolutely the same retelling as the Juliet Morelier book that I mentioned that I absolutely adored. And so I think that's partially why I loved it so well. But also it has the trope of an unknown identity. So we know who this character is undercover and then she meets important people and they don't know who she is because she can't speak it. I love that trope. 10 out of 10 times. I love when other characters don't know who they're dealing with. It's also just a lot of the weaving of this starstroke dragon net she has to get the help of the dragon prince to help her accomplish saving her brothers and defeating her stepmother but everything is not as it seems so there's a lot of twists and turns it's very predictable in the best way possible like not in a oh i'm annoyed because i really wanted to try to go somewhere unforeseen no it's like the most comforting best type of young adult fantasy possible in my opinion i absolutely loved the romantic relationship loved it i'm also excited to see how that might change in book two if i haven't said it yet yes i am reading book two asap i'm dying to continue on with this i do think it's just a duology but i cannot wait to get to it i'm excited to see how the romantic relationship changes then I loved some little bits of friendship, but the sibling relationships too were so sweet. And the stepmother daughter relationship, I loved the way we explored that. The magic was so neat. The descriptions were beautiful. The food descriptions were wonderful. It's just everything that I love in young adult fantasy. It was fun. It was heartwarming. It was heartbreaking. It was fast paced. It was engaging from start to finish. Whenever I wasn't reading this book, I wanted to pick it up and continue on reading. So not to hype it too much, but this just has a lot of things that I specifically go for when it comes to young adult fantasy. So I'm so glad that you guys chose this. I also don't know how I really haven't heard anything about it up until this point. I don't know why people aren't like raving about this other than the cover. Maybe they are. Maybe I'm oblivious. Maybe I've been out of the fantasy game for too long, but this was so precious and I can't wait to own book two because the second book is just as stunning as the first. So you'll probably be seeing that in a continuing fantasy series vlog next month. So on to the next one. Okay, here's a weird time to be coming at you. I'm waiting for my grocery order pickup, so I thought I would update you guys on what I've been reading right now to multitask, to save time. So what book do I have here with no dust jacket so I can read on my lunch break is A Magic Steeped in Poison. This is the next book I've decided to go ahead and pick up. And going into this, I really didn't know anything other than it was Asian inspired and dealing with tea magic and that sounded like something that I am absolutely down for and so I really had no expectation. Actually I'm pretty far into this novel by now so I am about 49%. I'm on page 190 out of like 350 something like that so I have made it a good portion of the way into this enough to fully let you know my first initial impressions and what I can say is I'm not immediately quite as drawn to it as I was to Six Crimson Cranes just because that type of fairy tale-esque retelling story really appeals to me. However, this being its own original tale is doing wonders. Like I really enjoy the main character 
in the very beginning, we follow the main character as she's with her sister who's very ill and we learn about how her mother was poisoned by tea, basically by these bandits almost in a way that people think the emperor was trying to keep control of people, scare them, poison people, kill them, and say, look, hey, I'm keeping you guys safe and protecting you by saving some people, but her mother actually died during the process, during these events. And her mother was what you call a Shenong Shi, and I don't know if I'm saying that right, there's a pronunciation I'm gonna have to look into in the back. They have magic that deals with brewing tea and healing people so this is what her mother was and she's going to leave her family to go to the palace to try to become this so there are these trials at the palace where she's competing amongst a lot of other people her age or older or different age to become that title I just said because there's only a new one named every so often um so she meets this like exiled prince or the shadow bandit on the way there and she has this encounter that she's very troubled by, feels like she's endangered. And then when she gets to the palace and starts the first trial, she encounters him again and he's not who she thinks he is. So she makes this alliance early on with this boy, teenager, man, whatever, I think they're like 16-ish, something like that. And he is, uh, I can't say who he is because of spoilers, but it leads to some very interesting twists and turns. So, so far we're just following these different trials that she has to encounter. It has excellent scenery descriptions, food descriptions, tea descriptions. It's all very beautifully written in that sense. Um, and I love this type of trial and elimination and we have these different tasks to complete. That is super fun in my opinion so far. I'm really excited to see where her relationship with this mysterious boy that she has encountered, where that goes. And then all also, there's somebody else very important that she's had to, under coercion, strike up a deal with at this point as well. And then she's also befriended some people in the competition. So we have all kinds of dynamics to this story. The writing is quick to the point. It's not flowery or over the top or hard to read. It's just engaging and fun. It's a page turner. I really care about the mystery of the plot. I really care about the characters and it's just an all around good time. I have nothing negative to say at this point. So I'll update you guys once I finished the second half. Can you tell I was just laying on my chest reading? I just finished. This is a little crooked. Is that better? I just finished reading A Magic Steeped in Poison by Judy I. Lynn. Okay, so I was wrong in my predictions because I did enjoy this just a little bit less than Six Crimson Cranes, which I thought this was going to rank just above that. But overall, I really enjoyed it. As I said, I think the trials of this competition to become the Shenong Shi was my favorite part. Like I really enjoy any time that there's trials that people have to complete to win, especially when the stakes are high and things are dangerous. So that's super fun. I also really enjoyed the relationship dynamic we had of Ning being caught in between two people. She's caught in between this princess who says that she wants her help and then she's caught in between the son of the banished prince, the shadow prince. And I love when somebody is kind of like going between, they don't know where their loyalties lie, they don't know who to trust. So all of those parts were super enjoyable. It lost me a little bit at the end because the ending felt kind of rushed. And I'm fine with that. I don't know if I necessarily would have wanted to read an additional 100 pages fully fleshing everything out. I'm not sure if that would have worked better, but I just almost even felt a little bit confused about the events that took place. I mean, I get the basic understanding understanding of what's trying to happen, but it really moved from this comp competition and relationships to more of the political goings on. So it was overall like a super enjoyable book and I don't really have too many actual critiques and criticisms of it. It just couldn't beat out six Crimson Cranes for me because of that fairy tale esque retelling vibe that I just absolutely adored. So this definitely comes in at number two so far. I mean, I really recommend this book and I am 99.9% .9 sure that I will be continuing on because at this point I do care. It was a very like, 
whoa, whirlwind, chaotic ending of events that took place, like one thing after another, bing, bam, boom. We are rushing into chaos and everyone's in danger and our main character is still in danger as this book ends. So I'm definitely curious to see where the events go in book two. So as of right now, the way that I rank the books that I have read, Six Crimson Cranes is number one, A Magic Steeped in Poison is number two, and Fireborn is number three. I will be very shocked if Fireborn beats out the next book that I'm going to read. So on to the next one. Okay, it's not been too long. I figured while I have you guys here, let's take a quick second to talk about the fourth and final book in this reading vlog. And that is Daughter of the Moon Goddess by Su Lin Tan. This has been extremely polarizing and oftentimes I've seen more negative reviews for it than positive at this point in my viewing range, but I'm really excited for it. It's funny because in A Magic Steeped in Poison, there was a reference to the Moon Goddess. And so I'm curious to find out more. I know it's inspired by Chinese mythology. It deals with immortals, magic, loss, and sacrifice. And I've heard it's a bit of a love triangle. That is all I know at this point in time. So let's get started. Okay guys, very quickly before I have to return to work, I just wanted to update about Daughter of the Moon Goddess, which I am absolutely loving. I didn't get to check in and do like a first quarter of the book check-in because I've just been so busy, but I just need to tell you guys how much I'm absolutely adoring this book. It is phenomenal, it is fabulous. I'm hoping to finish it probably tomorrow. I have some patron reading sprints that we're gonna do tonight and I think I'll get through a good portion of it then, but oh my God, it is so good. So what I can tell you is that we begin the book with the legend of the moon goddess, how she became trapped there and we're following the story of her daughter. Some events take place in the beginning. I don't wanna say anything spoilery at all, but it basically forces her to leave the moon where her mother is and flee and hide and she has to sort of just develop a life of her own and try to survive on her own during this time. It's very episodic in nature. We're following her on her own journey, accomplishing a lot of things, which I really enjoy the way that it's quick paced and we're not spending too much time in one place or another, which allows us to see more character interactions, more of her growth and development, more areas of the world. So the writing is lovely. Like I absolutely love the descriptions. All I can think the whole time that I'm reading it is that I wish I could watch a movie, like a Studio Ghibli adaptation of it afterwards. I think it would be so breathtaking because even the descriptions are just so, so lovely. It's definitely a love triangle story and it moves pretty quick in the romance. I wouldn't say it's like insta-love, but it doesn't bother me at all. Like I really enjoy reading about her relationship between these two different men and her thoughts and feelings trying to navigate them. And I actually think that it's pretty realistic in the way that she would be torn between the two and not know exactly what to do or how to control her feelings so much. So I don't wanna say anything too much yet about the actual plot before I recheck the synopsis so that I don't give anything away. Reading this book has just shown me that I should trust my gut instincts and just read the books I wanna read. I wanted to read this book from the moment I first saw the cover and heard about it and then everybody put me off from reading it so much because people had mostly negative things to say about it and I think that it's just such a fun, entertaining story. It doesn't need to be anything more than that for what I'm looking for at the time being. So I'm so excited you guys voted for me to read this book and I can't wait to keep going and see the outcome and then pick up the sequel in November. I'm so glad the book two is coming out. In November so I don't have to wait too long. Okay you guys so real quick before work it's five o'clock I'm going to update you guys because I did finish this 
This morning, had a little bit of insomnia and I'm trying to rest and stay in bed when I have insomnia. So I decided to finish this book and I loved it. I loved it from start to finish. There was never a moment or a time reading this book that I wasn't enjoying it, devouring it. I never wanted to put it down. So I didn't really do too great of a job giving you a synopsis for what this book entails. This book is following Xin Yen and she is the daughter of the moon goddess and the daughter of the archer who's very famous. The reason that her mother is exiled is because she supposedly stole this elixir of immortality. There's a lot more to it than that, which we'll find out, but basically Xing Yan has to flee her home and her mother on the moon. She ends up in the celestial kingdom where she has to disguise her identity because no one really even knows that she was born and she fears that that will cause more trouble for her mother. So she sort of makes a name for herself. She really tries to work her way up first by doing mundane maid type of jobs, and then she becomes the prince of the celestial kingdom, his companion with like learning skills and schooling and things like that. So this is broken up into three parts. The first part is really about her becoming friends with the prince. In that time, she discovers she's very skilled in archery as well since her father was. So she thinks about possibly joining the celestial army and taking part there. So then the second part follows her journeys and adventures as she has to defend the celestial kingdom against several different threats. And then the third part, I don't really wanna get into for spoiler reasons, but there is lots of emotional ties between different people in this. I absolutely loved the portions of the romance in this. I don't care if people think it's cheesy or insta-love. I, I don't know, I bought it all, I was there for it, I loved it. I mean, they are flying on clouds. They're traveling on clouds in this book. And if that doesn't scream Britney type of magic, I don't know what possibly could. So I loved the imagery. I loved the type of magic, the powers. If anything, I'd want more. But as I said, I loved how quickly things resolved in an episodic nature and then we would move on to the next event and it really just kept the pace going quickly and nicely in my opinion. You could totally read this as a standalone just fine. However, I am dying to get to sec the second book and I'm sure that a lot of you guys are too if you enjoyed this because it has to do with some of the romantic relationships. I will say that when I got to the last 100 pages or so, it was like unput downable because there were some twists and turns I could have never predicted. And then once they happened, I was like, girl, what now? What are we gonna do now? So it was fun, it was entertaining, it was exciting, it was believable, it was beautiful. So I, I don't know, I don't think it's the best fantasy book I've ever read by any means, but I truly enjoyed my time in this. And if any of those components sound interesting to you, I would say just give it a go because it reads pretty quickly. I can see the argument for this being young adult or adult, honestly. Um, as I said, I think it's shelved as adult, but doesn't read too different from young adult. So I love this. Now I really have to take some time to think about my order because this right now is sort of neck and neck with Six Crimson Cranes. They have a lot of similarities and a lot of differences. This one seems like a little bit more expanded upon the ideas, but honestly, I might be even more excited to continue with Six Crimson Cranes series. I don't know, love them both so much. So I will report back later with my final update and order. Okay, you guys, I'm here to wrap up this video. I feel like this has at least been a month in the making, but let's recap the books, my order of least favorite to favorite. Obviously, you guys already know, my least favorite was Fireborn, Rosaria Munda. This just didn't live up to the hype in my personal opinion. And the more I mentioned that to other people, the more that other people said that they felt similar to me. So this had all of the makings of a wonderful young adult fantasy book, but just couldn't execute it in the way that I wanted. But glad I read it, worth the read. Not gonna continue on with it. So you can say that I was correct with this one. In third place, we have A Magic Steeped in Poison by Judy I. Lynn. This was my second place prediction, I believe, 
Well, this was a fabulous, fast-paced, fun, interesting, gripping young adult fantasy with unique magic and colorful world building, politics, a mystery, so many great elements. It just couldn't quite beat out the other two. So third place was wrong about this one. That just means the other ones were better than I even expected. Okay, in second place, this was really, really hard for me to choose actually. So second place goes to Six Crimson, Crimson Cranes by Elizabeth Lim. I loved everything about this. I actually have like zero complaints. I absolutely cannot wait to pick up the sequel to this ASAP. I loved all of the characters. I love the plot, the mystery, the world building, the magic, all of it was perfection. So this came in second place, even though I predicted third. But my heart has to give the number one spot to Daughter of the Moon Goddess. I think because it's a tiny bit longer, it's a little bit more established. So we have a little bit more time with these characters. And I really enjoyed the love triangle and the twists in this. I loved the episodic nature that allowed us to see so much of this world. I think the author did a really great job with the world building. So I'm really looking forward to seeing where we go in book two. Cannot wait for November to come so I can read the second book. Let's put these in order here. And I wasn't too far off. Just swap the middle two from my original guess. So my very favorite on the bottom, my least favorite on the top. We did pretty good with the guessing. So first place, second, third, fourth. I had so much fun doing this reading vlog, you guys. Hopefully you're able to see I'm in a smidge better of a place <laughs> than when I started this vlog. And I can tell you that reading young adult fantasy and reading fantasy in general has significantly contributed to the joy that I have been experiencing over the last month. I am in the middle of eating disorder recovery therapy, hypnotherapy as well. And you know, it's ups and downs every day, all day, all week, all month, but keep fighting friends. So let me know if you guys want to see a video like this in the future. Give me any ideas that you have in the comments. I would love to hear from you guys. And also tell me what you guys thought about these books because I want to hear if it was the same as I thought or different. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you next time.